Hello folks, today is Friday, August 6, 2021. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, here to get you caught up on all the video game news that has been going on this week. I just drank some of the, the Dwayne The Rock Johnson energy drink. It tastes like... The Rock. I wish. I'm on the brink of death, but let's talk about video game news. The first thing is a new RPG from the makers of Elder Scrolls. Yes, uh, some former Elder Scrolls developers uh, are making their own new property uh, with grand ambitions, and it sounds pretty cool on paper. Now it is early, so take all this with a grain of salt, but the developer Once Lost Games has announced this new game called The Wayward Realms, and three of the head developers behind it uh, worked on stuff like Elder Scrolls, Daggerfall, and Arena. So the hardcore stuff. Don't expect this to maybe just be like a Skyrim ripoff. Uh, it seems like it's going a little bit more the classic style uh, RPG approach uh, with the game seemingly being billed as having some procedurally generated areas and its own actual game master programmed into the game. And uh, it seems like it's gonna have elves, dwarves, other types of mystical beings all in a place called the Ar Archipelago. Uh, it's a collection of islands. We have some screenshots and we have a, a very brief kind of cinematic trailer, uh, which at first looks pretty underwhelming, but by the end of the trailer, they reveal a big environment and it does look pretty cool. I'm always itching for new RPGs, especially fantasy RPGs, considering uh, the market is pretty cornered around the big property. So I am looking forward to stuff like uh, that one that Obsidian is working on for Xbox, as well as now this, The Wayward Realms. It doesn't have a release date yet, but it does have a Steam page. I expect this to be quite a while, but it's pretty interesting and a little different, so we wanted to put it on your radar. And also, I guess in terms of news, if we're talking about everything, uh, if you're one of the people looking forward to the next Elder Scrolls, but you still don't have it in your head that we're not getting it anytime soon, Phil Spencer, head of Xbox, reiterated that Elder Scrolls Scrolls isn't going to release until after Fable in terms of when he was talking about Xbox properties. So with Fable seemingly a long time away and with Bethesda going on record a thousand times about how far off Elder Scrolls is, Here's just reinforcement of that. Don't expect anything until 2023 or after that. In other news, some inside baseball business stuff that some of you guys might find kind of interesting. Uh, there was an EA earnings call where CFO Blake Jorgensen went on record about studio acquisitions and their reputation and stuff like that. Because as you guys probably know, for many years, EA has developed a reputation around uh, buying up studios and bringing them under the EA wing and then shutting them down just a few years later. It's happened quite a bit. Of course, the one that stings the most is Visceral Games, uh, the people behind Dead Space. But now EA seems like they want credit for being better at this. Jorgensen's quote is, we do a great job of working with other parts of our company and when we bring in acquisitions, we work well with them. He pointed out that Respawn and Apex Legends and just the amount of money Respawn is bringing in for them is kind of like the, the best prime example of this and he said that's unheard of in our industry and i'm not sure we get enough credit for it which immediately a bunch of people laughed at ea because obviously it's another opportunity to dunk on ea and it is of course corporate speak it's early to really talk about that because i mean apex legends yes jedi fallen order yes they've made one titanfall game so they're on their way but with things like this especially when it's corporations or heads of corporations talking we want to see action. If EA sticks around for a couple of years and doesn't close down studios, especially the ones that make some games that we do actually enjoy, then we'll believe him. Then we won't take it with a grain of salt. I've said it twice this episode, I'm sorry. Also worth highlighting, PlayStation had a big indies thing this week. Uh, like everything I talk about, it's gonna be linked in the description down below. Shout out to PlayStation for really highlighting some cool indies. Uh, we got some pretty interesting looks at some stuff like Oxen Free 2, and most importantly, at least for us, Axiom Verge 2, which looks quite different, but also really, really awesome. It's going to have two explorable worlds now, and it's going to be focused on even more like a non-linear exploration type stuff. And just like the visuals, the sound, everything is firing on all cylinders. Can't wait to get our hands on that one. Oh, and then shifting gears from PlayStation to Xbox news, in some dumb news, Waze is doing a promotion of Microsoft and Xbox. So now, uh, if you use the Waze app, which... Um, it's act Waze is actually like way better than Google Maps or Apple Maps, just saying. So now you can get the voice of both uh, the bad guy in the upcoming Halo Infinite and also, of course, Master Chief, which is dope. I love that. Now all they need to do, and not to be like an old man or anything, but they really need to make me Master Chief yell at you to stop texting while driving. 
Yeah, I'm talking to you. Hey, next up, this episode is brought to you by Raycon. These earbuds start at about half the price of other premium audio brands, but they don't sacrifice on the quality. They sound just as good. As you guys know, we've worked with Raycon for a while now, and I've used this pair of everyday earbuds for over a year now, and they just won't die. I've found them perfect for exercising. That's where I wear them the most. Yes, I know I actually exercise. I know you won't believe me, but they fit comfortably and they don't fall out thanks to every pair coming with a set of gel tips to customize your comfort to make sure it fits right. They're low profile, sleek, and with the cool charging carrying case, they can have a battery life of up to about 32 hours. They pair it painlessly with Bluetooth and they've got a 45 day happiness guarantee. So if you wanna check them out, and of course it helps this show, uh, you can click the link in the description box down below or go to buyraycon.com slash game ranks to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. That's buyraycon.com slash game ranks. And thanks to Raycon for sponsoring our videos. Also in terms of what's going on this weekend, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, the Back for Blood open beta is a thing or beta for my UK friends if you're nasty. But uh, how this goes down is essentially you can register for access uh, and also of course pre-order. I'm not the biggest fan of like pre-ordering to be able to play uh, a beta, but that is a thing. A bunch of people are jumping into it. I am personally waiting until the game fully releases, but if you're jumping in this weekend, really wanna hear from you in the comments or hit me up on social media what you're thinking. Uh, we want to know how big of a deal Back for Blood might be, how many videos we should make about it, so we'd love to hear your feedback from jumping in on that. Also, we've talked about it before because it's this weird fascination of mine. Uh, they're making a game where you play as Jesus. Yes, we've talked about this in the past. It is called I Am Christ. Uh, it's seemingly a very small independent project. Uh, the developers have been posting uh, developer uh, vlog videos breaking down their process. And we got a new one uh, that highlights more gameplay. You see some character interaction. You see some exploration. Uh, you get to see a giant map of like the Sea of Galilee that they're recreating, which is actually very interesting. Uh, but also it seems like it's like a survival game like you're playing as Jesus and you're walking around and it's like you're hungry Press F to pick up berries and eat them before you go meet John the Baptist. It's like What? I've just been consistently fascinated by this project just because somebody's doing it someone like wow All right, you're making that. Okay, let's go I don't really have anything else to say about that, so let's move on. Also just wanted to highlight, linked in the description down below, uh, a cinematic trailer for the new Guardians of the Galaxy game that is highlighting the villain. It's pretty flashy, it's pretty cool. I still don't know what to think about that game, but we linked that if you want to check it out. Right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I just, I, I look at gameplay and I go, I don't know. Also, in more serious news, if you've been following the Activision Blizzard scandal issues and how they have been sued by the state of California for unsafe work practices and discrimination and harassment, uh, the president of Blizzard, J. Allen Brack, has stepped down, which is pretty nuts considering uh, he's been a Blizzard person and at the forefront of Blizzard for a really long time. He was one of the king of the nerds. But in terms of significant action, that's what we've seen so far. Uh, in terms of like what workers are asking for, this definitely ain't it, like this isn't enough, but we're curious to see where this is gonna develop because as of this week, that's all that's really happened. But on the PC side of things, uh, we missed talking about this last week. Uh, I wanted to link it. IGN did it, more interviews uh, with Gabe Newell and Valve people about the Steam Deck and stuff, but uh, Gabe went on record talking about how Half-Life Alex and how that game ended, which I won't spoil, essentially sets up the direction that they're going to go with the next Half-Life, which first of all, that language and them talking openly about that is pretty awesome. I can't believe we're here. So specifically, I wanna get the quotes right. Uh, Newell said that the ending worked perfectly and uh, he said, endings are hard, but to us it feels like the right progression for where we're going with Half-Life. Uh, so it worked perfectly in terms of where we're headed. So can you just, can we just acknowledge that he said we're headed somewhere, uh, where, where we're going with Half-Life? That sounds like they're definitely doing more. We've talked about that a little bit in the past. They've alluded to it, but that to me is like the best sounding so far. And I'm really excited because I'm going to go on record here and say like Half-Life Alex is one of my favorite games ever. It's definitely my favorite VR game. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. What if they just make Half-Life a looter shooter? I want a rare crowbar. Terrible, awful joke. Cut it, yeah. cut it. Also in some surprise news this week, uh, we're possibly getting a new South Park game, but there's a bit more to it. So in case you missed the entertainment news, uh, Matt, Matt, Matt Stone, Matt Trey Park, uh, Trey, Trey Parker, Matt Stone, or, or Matt Parker and Trey Stone. What is it? Did I get it right the first time? So they got paid 
almost a billion dollars by Paramount and Viacom CBS to continue making South Park forever, which is funny because they've gone on record multiple times about how they're they want to, they're tired of it. But I guess they got some new juice because they're going to keep going. A million bajillion dollars will definitely make you do that. So not only are they making new South Park shows and movies and stuff like that, but a small line in the news is a new 3D video game in the works. And it's not clear whether or not Ubisoft is making it with them. Apparently, they are self-financing this thing, which is Pretty cool. Uh, they've been pretty hands-on with the other South Park projects because they are seemingly very passionate about video games. So they finally cracked the code. South Park games have been pretty good. I'm really excited to see where this could actually go and who's going to help them make it. it. Maybe it's just Ubisoft again. Maybe not. Maybe, I don't know. It could be anyone. But all things considered, like these guys also make things that aren't South Park related that are very good. So I'd love to see them make a video game that has nothing to do with South Park. They like games, so do a thing. But that's just me, soapbox over. Uh, that's all the video game news this week. There was quite a bit, despite it being a slow week. So I wanna hear from you guys in the comments what you think about everything going on. Number one, if you're playing the Back for Blood beta, open beta, I almost said beta, uh, what do you think of it? Are you down? Is it better than Left for Dead? What are you thinking about it? Any of your thoughts? Definitely let us know. And also with the news, uh, the PlayStation Indies, what really caught your eye there? Are you looking forward to jumping into one of those games? It's been a good year for Indies uh, with Death Door most recently, but there's so much more coming. Also the Wayward Realms, do you think that sounds promising? I think the, pred the pedigree behind it is fine, but we need to see a lot more, obviously. I think EA's statement is full of bullshit. Let's talk about anything video game news down in the comments. We definitely wanna hear from you. And of course, if you wanna yell at me directly, I'll be down there as much as possible, but if you wanna hit me up, uh, hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, at Jake Baldino and youtube.com slash Jake Baldino. But thank you for coming around every Friday and just getting caught up on the news with us. We like doing this. So uh, if you're having fun with us, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It legit helps us. But thank you for being here. I'm Jake Baldino. Thanks for watching. Pizza's on me. And have a good weekend. Have, a, have, yourself, a, have yourself a good weekend.